super proud, super happy to have such a great team here on stage. This is super, super great. Um, uh, so what we want to tell you the next 30 minutes is um, about those data journeys that you guys have, have had in the last decades. So we have like, I don't know, half a century at least, maybe it's even a century. Um, on the stage, with, the yeah. 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 <laughs> with me, <laughs> starting with as a kid. Now. Yes. Yeah, so uh, without further ado, let's go. What, what have we prepared? Um, hey, Alex, before so you start, oh. I think uh, there's lots of people here in the audience. Please, I have a question. Um, maybe we can figure out how much data sits in this room. Data, data, yeah. Okay. So everybody, please raise your hand if you have access to a data set larger than one petabyte. Okay, huh? so we have like five petabyte here, larger than 10 terabyte. Ah, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, so one terabyte. Oh, and, and under one terabyte. One megabyte. Oh. <laughs> one megabyte, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can use Excel. Okay, so I think we have lots of data in here, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, cool, cool. That was the, yeah. that was unexpected. Okay, <laughs> hey. So let's start. So um, so what we what we want to what we want to share with you is um, yeah about this thing we call the data journey, and we want to tell you and uh, give some ideas on what is data strategy. How do you da do data governance? We already had some great talks to that yesterday. Then um, how you are agile? How you really quick in your labs in your lab environment? So how are you? Um, actually iterating much faster than with the traditional IT models. But also, and I think this is the biggest challenge at the moment, um, uh, as most of the people are, or the companies are out of the labs at the moment, how do you actually scale your use cases into the factory and how you really create data products? And then, how you actually operate them? How do you maintain models? How do you um, uh, yeah, keep your models up to date? How you make sure that your product is actually used by everyone in the company? And um, starting uh, now with the first point is, how do you actually scale your use cases? So how do you manage to get your data products? Um, and actually also, how do you manage your use case portfolio? So. Well, I would start, and uh, I would my first statement would be: we made uh, a big mistake in the past in the data community in many companies that we didn't design our units to bring stuff live. We designed our units, uh, data units, to to build prototypes, but not to build products that go live and are operated. Um, and that is a major shift because it means that you're not looking so much for the statistics and machine learning skills, which you still need, but you look for people who can build full software products. And we, when we built up uh, the new unit at uh, Volkswagen Financial Services, we designed the unit from the beginning to bring products live, um, to always think about the next phases when we start, to program only uh, in Python and, and a few other languages and not R, because R is not really a programming language. It, it's very difficult to bring it live, uh, and it sucks to, to integrate it with other software components, um, and to build stuff on the same environment as we run it. And that was a major shift. And, and everyone knows when I build something, I'm responsible until the end of the life of this product for that product. And that is also a major shift in thinking compared to um, a lot of more garage and lab uh, style uh, organizations. Really good. So, Salandu, how are you doing this, KK? So we actually had a, uh, we, we weren't very organized when we started out with this. And so what happened is we just needed to do it. Zalando, as most of you know, is a, an online retailer, Europe's top fashion retailer. What that means is, and we're only 11 years old, this is our 11th year. And so what it did was there were so many teams, everybody who needed to do machine learning, data science, even before that, the business intelligence, they just went and did it to begin with. And so when we looked at, I did a quick survey a few months ago about how many teams wanted to do data science right now or machine learning, there were 48 teams that signed up and said, you know, they're either doing it right now or they want to do it right now. 48. 48 teams 48 across the teams. company. You can't, hey, no press, please. <laughs> 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 but that includes teams that were already working on some of these things and others that weren't. 
So what that does is there are teams that have actually been using technologies. There are teams that have been on-prem, are moving to cloud. There are teams that are starting now that are actually directly going to the cloud. So a very complex scenario. I would have loved to do what you guys did where you limit you know, a set of technologies that you start with. But we came into this just organically. And so we have many, many teams, many different technologies. Uh, and we can talk a little bit about how we are trying to address it organizationally later on, if you want. Yeah. But that's where we are right now. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I think everybody would agree if I say uh, time to market is the most essential thing if you want to um, translate from use case to a data product. So I also advise my colleagues to use like um, technologies who are already in production um, to get this uh, very fast. Um, because if you're like, uh, choosing one of these tech grants, Silicon Valley new technologies, uh, we have, you have to um, wait um, a few months if, um, to get it set up and get budget for them and to get security approvals and whatever. Yeah, and how do we manage like, um, our use cases? We have a use case library built up ah, cool. mm -hmm. um, with all our business departments. And um, yeah, we manage them like uh, selecting them for cost savings, uh, revenue, growth, uh, but also for strategic relevance. So yeah, uh, that's I think that's normal stuff. Yeah. Like. Cool, interesting. So, so you talked about the organization, and Ingo, I know that you guys are now building up. Um, you're setting up your whole new organization for the data and AI topic. So, can you elaborate a little bit? Um, I don't know what you yep. can share, but I think <laughs> it's really interesting to understand how you're doing it at at, at Porsche. Yeah, our, our data journey started uh, together with Alex at um, the Volkswagen digitization department. Um, I think it was like three years ago. Three years, yeah. Um, the guys started um, a cross-brand um, initiative. Um, like or every brand was invited, like Scania, Porsche, Audi, Volkswagen, Volkswagen Financial Services. So all brands and. Um, yeah, we think about um, everybody has the problem to get use cases live, and Alex and his team started to to figure out how to um, how to how to solve these problems. And yeah, we we took this um, this initiative and, and and put it into Porsche. And yeah, after that we we searched uh, like a, a lean organization model mm -hmm. which we can implement in our company. And I think we we found something. We call it our, our data office. So every business department um, is with uh, like big data domains mm -hmm. um, sitting in this in this uh, data office, and um, together we are like learning constantly from each other, but um, keeping um, the speed every department um, yeah, has on its own. Because like we have big departments like R and D and sales, they do uh, data uh, research and whatever it's like for years, and we have like departments HR whatever. Um, just starting. Just starting, yeah. So okay. But I think um, we have a we have a very good uh, situation now where we got all uh, and everybody, every department on the table, and I think that's cool. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I found uh, mm -hmm. being at Porsche that you guys are collaborating a lot. So actually, mm -hmm. in the data office, there's even finance. So every department is involved. Yeah. Um, so Keke, you said that you have 48 <laughs> teams. <laughs> <laughs> um, sounds sounds that's like a similar <laughs> challenge even <laughs> if you're a pure online business. So I think that's really interesting what we see here that Porsche as a manufacturer has the same yeah, challenges as um, one of the, one yep. of the, lea the leading <laughs> retailer in Germany. So and that, um, was, uh, that was just machine learning, to be clear. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> There's a lot of other data that uh, happens. <laughs> but organizationally, we actually went through a very interesting transition. So what happened initially is Zalando, all the tech teams were part of one organization to begin with, the central organization on the data side. Mm -hmm. So when you did BI, when you needed to do you know, Oracle ETLs, if you needed to do MicroStrategy, Tableau, all of those things, everybody from the analysts to the ETL guys to the data guys, everybody was in one group until a mm -hmm. few years ago. And then we realized that the business units weren't really getting the help that they needed. So what we did was we exploded those teams out, and we created a small central function. That's the one that I run. Okay. And uh, we're about 100, 120 people. That does everything small. from <laughs> small for Zalando with you know, 2,500 or so people in this space. Uh, but we have now everything from business intelligence to artificial intelligence and everything in between. So you know, the data warehouse, the MicroStrategy Tableau, all of those things, the Oracle, uh, 
the AWS, the Google, the uh, machine learning, AI, everything. What we do centrally now is for those teams that have already done a lot of this stuff and are very advanced, uh, we help them with things like security, things like compliance, what you talked about, yep. GDPR, how do you give them what they need in order to stay compliant and be able to do things that they need to do. But with the other teams, like those 48 teams, some of these are teams that just haven't really started at all. They have the data, they may have an analyst, they may have a data scientist, and we help them by giving them best of breed tools from across the world, right? So I work with startups in Silicon Valley, I work with all the big names out there, uh, I work with uh, the open source people, I work with the inner source, what have these advanced teams done that others can use? So now we have a central function with these satellites inside the business units, okay, and it seems okay. to be working quite well. Gotcha. So, so basically, you're, you're taking the existing knowledge from those um, more advanced teams, and you're scaling it out via some central platform organization, you helping can say? Helping others. Yes. Helping the others. Yes. So that's really absolutely. cool. And not just that, though. It's also the others, right? If I talk to AWS, or if I talk to Oracle, they're right here, right? And I learn something from them on how to do this. We're, we're transitioning to Exadata at this time. And... Uh, Oracle Exadata in the cloud is something that all of these satellite teams would be using once it's ready and once it's running. So we learn from the vendors, we learn from the open source, we learn from the inner source, and then we try and spread it to everybody. Very nice, mm. very nice. Cool. So Alex, reminds me um, about what, what you um, built up uh, in the Think Data organization. I think A little bit, somehow... Yeah. Can you elaborate on how you do it? So in the yeah, yeah, it's um, so, so, so basically uh, the model, the data off the data board model that that um, Ingo just described. This is something we set up across a lot of our brands within the group, um, and that was sort of a catalyst to make sure that data is on the agenda, also of top executives, that it's discussed, that problems are solved, that things are set up. Um, and uh, when I came in actually to financial service, for example, financial services uh, one year roughly ago, uh, we didn't have this situation uh, that we had 48 teams uh, across the globe that work on data. It was more like a lot of, there was some, were some silos where, where people were doing good stuff, and there was also a lot of uh, external collaboration uh, where people were doing some data stuff, and we had a very strong uh, data warehouse and BI team. But it was not really data analytics sort of ingrained in all the business function like at Zalando. So what we did is we s set up a central um, function uh, in, uh, in the headquarter in Berlin and in Berlin, um, which basically serves uh, directly operationally the European market. Um, and we also uh, uh, create teams in the, in the two major uh, markets in North America and China. Okay. Um, and that's, that's sort of the setup where we uh, chose. Um, and in the central function that we created, the data analytics uh, and AI unit, we have um, a very interesting model. Uh, most people know the Spotify model uh, with squads and, and chapters. Um, so we have three chapters. One is uh, product management. One is um, data science uh, and AI engineering, we call it. And the third one is uh, platform and data engineering, uh, who also do the operations. So this is sort of the chapter setup. And we started actually off with this kind of setup. And then after a while, we, 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 we found out that having three teams is great in terms of skills, but it doesn't get you stuff done because people start not to talk to each other at mm -hmm. some point because they sit in three different organizations. So we created four squads uh, that go sort of horizontally, which are staffed interdisciplinary by from Very each nice. of the teams um, for each of the key domains where we want to create business value. So that is for us, customer, vehicle, um, OPEX uh, or, or enterprise uh, efficiency and uh, mobility, which is the new business. Okay, and really since we moved to that model, like it's, it's the, the level of collaboration is fantastic between the people who think like a business person and the people who think like an IT person, the people who think like a machine learner mm. guy. Very nice. Very nice, yeah. So basically, you have the teams that are interdisciplinary, yeah. that are working yeah. on solutions based on your portfolio. Yeah. And on the other hand, you have the same type of people organized yeah. in chapters yeah. where they can still exchange their best practices, where they yeah. are within their peers. Yeah. So that's how yeah. you are setting up this. Yeah, and the chapter leads actually also set the standards for the team within okay. that role. Okay, gotcha. So and Very ensure nice. the quality, basically. Really cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, we were also mentioning... Data governance, GDPR. Yeah, we had a really, really nice uh, 
um, discussion yesterday in the ethics panel. Today is actually also a GDPR panel. Um, so, so this is like, I mean, is it a good topic? Is it a bad topic? Um, did you guys finally solve it? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, you maybe Alex, first. maybe <laughs> Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Alex, want if, to you start can, if you can elaborate a little bit, we agreed that I start, but I don't want to start. <laughs> <laughs> We're not allowed to say anything now. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, okay yeah, I, I start. Just joking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, so 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 basically, um, what what we do is uh, we we do data governance in two kind of ways. First of all, the regulatory data governance. So there's um, a set of data that is very well governed in our organization because it's regulatory required uh, um, because we are a bank, sort of partly a bank. Um, and, and, and there we have really a data management team, according to all the books of standards that you know of data governance, DAMA and so on. Like it's a very similar setup that you find in the, in the literature. It's also based on traditional data warehousing, so it's all sort of the way you, you've probably heard about the last 10, 15 years, uh, how it's done. Um, and then um, on the other side, we have the more sort of uh, agile organization. Um, w with our unit sort of in the center and the digital unit in the cen center, which uh, creates more front ends and back ends for channels, customer channels. Um, and there we, we do data governance, basically use case driven. So whenever we have okay. a use case um, that, that we start to build, we put the data into the data dictionary. Actually, the business function, uh, the business unit that wants to have that product, they have to fill in the data dictionary. Um, and uh, when it goes live, we even, you know, we, we, we even pr more properly manage than the data. Um, and once basically it's in the lake for, for production, then it's properly managed. Uh, so we have sort of different zones of data, if you like. Uh, the, the data that basically is out of our scope and the data that is, is within our scope of our use cases. And based on that, we try to build synergies. And next time you take the data, you know, the quality and so on. Okay, okay. Okay, Kate, this is, uh, I think, one of your <laughs> expertise. Absolute, it, absolute. it is becoming one of my expertise areas, I think. Uh, so did we solve data governance? Uh, I'd say define data governance, right? <laughs> I, I actually don't like that term, data governance, and just because it has a very negative connotation, mm -hmm. uh, don't yes. think of it negatively. Data governance really is not about limiting access to people it's instead about allowing people to have safe access and actually sharing it more. So what I did was, I, I'm a Silicon Valley guy, right? And I, I don't like to just do things because a law says that you have to do it. We'll do it, sure. But that's not the thing that drives you. So I like to think of it as do the right thing. And so for data governance, doing the right thing meant internally creating a way of understanding what is personal information, et cetera, creating those uh, GDPR requirements, making sure your data is protected, et cetera. But while you're doing that, what also happens is now you really know what data is inside your organization. So when you're collecting this information, why do you just use it for governance? So we turned it around, and I said, we're going to share this data. We're going to share KPIs. We're going to share trusted data sets. We're going to put labels on, is this the gold data set? Is this an untrusted data set? How Very fresh nice. is it? Cool. And we're going to make it available, even if it's a model. You know, people were talking about transfer learning yesterday and machine learning. How do you take work that's been done by one team and let others use it? So I look at data governance as not just a regulatory requirement, but something that really can become an unfair advantage for your company to really understand your data and share it internally. So that's my view on data Very governance. Nice. Are we done with it? No, we're still in the early stages. We are good with GDPR, sharing everything else. Uh, it's a journey. We're in the beginning. Very nice. Thank you. This, this is a topic for forever, so I think you can be done any time. <coughs> so we, we started, uh, we had, we started um, with a big GDPR project a few years ago, and, and now we have like, software introduced uh, to manage these GDPR topics and introduced new roles. Um, I think more interesting for the data scientists might be that at, at the moment we started a project um, for a data catalog, Mm -hmm. uh, we called it uh, Datenlandkarte in Germany, and um, I mean, you, you all know the situation. You are going to a new customer, <coughs> and the customer wants uh, that you do some magic on their data, and and then <coughs> he tells you, "Here's the documentation," and you look at, have a look at the documentation, and you say, "Oh." <laughs> 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 so I think we, we are trying to like introducing an enterprise um, data catalog at the moment. 
um, I think that would be helpful for everyone to to know which data is in the company and um, I think and so. What, yeah. What can I do with it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I love the idea that it's not just some regulation, but it's finally finding out what data you have and making this curated and accessible to everybody. Um, uh, and I like the approach doing this use case per use case. Um, we had the discussion yesterday maybe to do this, this great rollout uh, of the data lake, of GDPR, of all that stuff is uh, maybe sometimes a big challenge, especially for the traditional companies. So coming to the last point, um, <laughs> and I think I we could talk forever on this point, but um, just for you guys real quickly, um, yeah, everybody knows this MedTurk picture of the big data, AI, whatever landscape, and it's still growing. On the other hand, we see that there's some, uh, yeah, some kind of standards coming out. A lot of people are using Python now, Spark, um, so can you elaborate on that, um, Ingo? How, how are you setting up? You're actually in, in IT infrastructure, so how yeah. are you doing that at Porsche? Yeah, like everyone else, we have like lots of tools um, from, from Spark, Python, Tableau, ClickSense, uh, and you name it. Um, but I think um, our new CIO, we have a new CIO since uh, November, and one of his key topics is also AI, and um, at the moment we are... Um, we are thinking about a new AI strategy and evaluating all platforms. Are they, uh, are they enable us for AI? And um, yeah, he wants, he wants to, to, um, to get like 100 employees at the end of the year to, wow. uh, okay. who are special, uh, specialized in, in AI. So, cool. yeah. So I applications think. to Porsche? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, it's for internal employees. Ah, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> But you can come to Salando. You can come to Salando. And Berlin's a great city. <laughs> yeah, so lots to do, yeah. <coughs> Changing a lot at the moment. Yeah. Sounds interesting. I mean, ours was, uh, so I actually like that term zoo. I'm going to use that. I used to call it a jungle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, jungle. But I think it's really a zoo. A zoo, uh, zoo is good because at Hadoop you have elephants. And yes, and exactly. <laughs> And, and all the, the, all the, the animals out there. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what have you started, Alex? <laughs> so uh, our strategy really started. People were doing things in-house. We were doing things on, uh, you know, things like Oracle, XSL, etc., MicroStrategy, etc. And then over a period of time, we started doing everything on the cloud. And of course, we like to do stuff with. Uh, we experimented with something we called radical agi agi radical agility. Yeah. And uh, what radical agility really was, was that we did not limit any team from picking the technology that they wanted, that they needed to use for their purpose. And so what that really did was everybody literally went out and picked whatever worked for them. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden, we really did have a zoo. We have pretty much every technology that you can think of. We have uh, in the data space. We have uh, things that we've invented inside. We have open source. We have you know, third parties, and uh, we have all the clouds. We have uh, Amazon, we have Google, we have Oracle, we have uh, very advanced teams doing sub-millisecond serving of models. Uh, for instance, when you do these recommendations, etc., it's in milliseconds. You really have to give somebody the recommendations as they are mm -hmm. uh, the surfing website, the yeah. website, right? And then there are things that are many hours. You can take your time, you can do it there. A couple of things that we really consolidated down to was we said we're going to pick one cloud as the main uh, data lake, main data source. I'm not going to say which one. <laughs> uh, but what we did was we still use all different clouds, et cetera, for what, what they're good for. We, did, uh, we took one decision, which was, you know, I had lived the Hadoop uh, story uh, several times in my life. And uh, we said, this time, we don't actually need to use Hadoop if you're in the cloud. That's really and interesting. So, so yeah. we did our data lake without Hadoop at all. It's completely Spark-based, mm. uh, completely with Kafka. We actually open sourced Kafka. There's a wrapper that we put around it called Nakadi. You can check it out. Uh, and so we were able to take the best of breed from everybody and then avoid the things that were good mm -hmm. five years ago and just go with things that are working today. Mm -hmm. So that's really interesting. So you're not using Hadoop. We still use Hadoop where we have been using sure. it in the past, yeah. but our data lake is completely Spark-based. Interesting. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. 
Alex, how are you solving this uh, synergy versus agility thing? Well, so, so our setup is we have the traditional data warehouse and BI environment, which is on-prem. Um, but for all the new stuff uh, that is not reporting um, and uh, sort of self-service BI, uh, well, self-service BI is an edge case, but for, for all the sort of new stuff like building data and AI products, we bu built that cloud first. Um, right now we have also our um, main data lake uh, for, for, for the analytics products and AI products uh, within one cloud provider like you guys. Um, and, um, and basically we, we, we have standards like uh, within, at least within our unit and with people we work with, uh, which is basically Python to develop the products. And we have Spark and Java on for data engineering purposes and that's sort of it. Uh, so we try to limit the amount of, of languages as well, because that's much easier yeah. to take over, to help each mm -hmm. other, because we're not, we don't have 100 people centrally for that, which means that you know, we have to help our, each other. You know, everyone has to, to be able to take over from the other. And uh, after a while, you can't manage that if everyone is using a different language. Um, so that's mm -hmm. sort of the, the setup we chose. So, so basically, also, all our new digital applications, not only data applications, are also made in the same cloud. Okay. So all the new channels worldwide uh, that are customer facing are built on the same cloud. So we still have a lot of stuff on-prem, a lot of legacy, of course, as a financial institution. But the good thing is there's a shift towards the cloud with uh, more and more applications, and that's fantastic. And we're one of the few uh, financial institutions in Germany that actually does that. Really cool, really cool. So we have to, unfortunately, we have to wrap up. I already got the sign. Um, uh, so please, guys, if you can give the audience one statement, um, and Alex, if you would like to start. So what, what is your key takeaway of your um, data journey so far? Can you share that with us? So, so, so as it's on the slide, you know, my, our biggest learning was that we are not in the, so much in the data business. We are in the software business. And we build software products, which has a lot of data in it and, and uh, a lot of machine learning in it, but at the end we build software products. And that's very different from seeing yourself as a BI kind of uh, you know, data uh, uh, focus uh, group, which means that now we also need to develop a lot of software skills. Uh, and uh, our data engineers are really, really good in building software. Our data scientists are really good in hacking, but not necessarily in software development. So this is where we need to skill up people so they uh, write code that is, you know, proper soft, you know, it's not. That's actually oper, yeah. yeah. Can you can operate as a data product and it's not just a script. Yes, and there's a big difference, by the way, between a computer scientist writing code and a physician, physicist or a chemist who writes code. <laughs> Which that one is better? My learning. <laughs> 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 okay. KK. Um. Sure, I can go next. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah sorry. Yeah, no worries. Uh, so, Bottom line for us really is that you have to provide across the organization some of those tools, some of those platforms that are going to make life easier for the others. They don't mm. necessarily have to be the most cutting edge things. They have to be the right thing that people need. So I'll give you an example. Everybody talks about data scientists spending 80% of their time doing you know, data cleaning, et cetera. That's actually true. We see that all the time. Uh, I don't know if it's 80, if it's 70, if it's 90, but a lot of the time of a data scientist is actually spent just preparing the data, cleaning the data, getting those tools. So what we like to do is do this once, let people have the option to use this, and if it's not good enough for them, then they have the option to go do anything else that they want. Okay. With our help, if they need our help, we will help them. But first, give them best of breed solutions that actually do what they need, the data itself and the tools around it, and then let people have the ability to do more if they need to. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I think it's very hard work, but uh, please keep trying and, and bring every business department on the table because I think that's, that's very important if you want to be a data-driven organization in the, in the whole. Uh, yeah. Okay, very nice. Especially, I think, for the, for the cross-functional use cases, right? Mm -hmm. So True. Um, we've seen a lot of really, really nice use cases, really big ROI capability building use cases that were not just relevant for one department, but they were, I don't know, for example, in, in a manufacturing, we, 
in a predictive maintenance, you, you really go from the supplier to, the, to after sales. You want to understand if there's some quality issue in the field. Um, was it due to some production error? Was it due to some even engineering error? That, yeah, that the part was actually designed wrongly. And if you do not bring all those people together to explain the data, and if you don't um, yeah, actually put mm -hmm. all the data together, you do really hard doing this for just one department. Yeah. And it's always also a struggle, I think, for the budgeting here. Um, so, um, so I think the good thing now is, um, I remember last year um, I was talking to a lot of you people and you were saying, yeah, we, we now playing around with AI, we're starting to do, to do stuff. Um, um, now we actually see that even in Europe, finally, we have proven that AI and data is, it's not just the hype like the internet, yeah? It's, it's gonna stay, there's some value to it. Um, now we start scaling stuff, we start really building products. Um, for example, Forberg, one of our clients, just launched the, the new Thermomix with a recommender engine actually in it. Um, so this, this stuff is there, is there to stay, it's actually generating value. Um, but still, and I really like how you guys solved that, um, you don't want to govern too much, you don't want to build your next book of standards that you become your next, let's say, traditional IT organization and that you keep people playing around with things. But sure, if they want to use the platform, they have to adhere to some rules, yeah. mm -hmm. right? So thank you very much, guys. I think this was a great discussion. I think all of you are around for the whole day. Yeah. So all, also, they don't bite, yeah? If you have any <laughs> questions, please just go to those guys. I don't know if you have the chance to, to talk to such a, uh, a great um, team and expertise again. Thanks for listening and uh, have a great second day. Um, I hope the hangover will, uh, will uh, vanish a little bit. And um, yeah, and join the GDPR panel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.